This is the ultimate guide to an animal-based diet. In this video, I'm gonna break down the history of an animal-based diet, why I think this is a good diet for humans, and I'm gonna go through how much protein, how many carbohydrates, sources of fat, why fruit and honey, things like squash, fat sources, raw dairy, all kinds of good stuff. What is an animal-based diet? An animal-based diet is a way of eating that I think is a very evolutionarily consistent diet for humans. If you think about hunter-gatherer groups around the world, like the Hadza are some of the only remaining hunter-gatherers left on the planet, or the Khoisan in Botswana, South Africa, and Namibia. These people seek meat. They eat the whole animal. They seek organs. Hunting is the center of their diet. I visited the Hadza a few years ago in Tanzania and got to see this firsthand. I went hunting with them. They're not after vegetables. They really like fruit when it's ripe, and they will eat honey, but they're not a big fan of leaves. They're not a big fan of seeds, unless they're starving. So think about this, guys. What are the most nutrient-dense foods on the planet that are the lowest in toxins? And what kind of toxins am I thinking about? Not just toxins like pesticides or processed food toxins like seed oils. I'm talking about things like plant defense chemicals from leaves, especially from seeds, which is seeds, nuts, grains, and beans. I'll talk a little bit more about that in a moment. But the most nutrient-rich foods are meat and organs. And the least toxic plant foods are the colorful parts that plants want you to eat the fruit, and we know this very clearly, guys, that there are toxins in unripe fruit. So the idea of eating an unripe banana or an unripe mango makes zero sense. There are things called non-protein amino acids in unripe fruit, which are much higher and lower when these fruit ripen. What's the problem with non-protein amino acids? High level, these are amino acids that mimic amino acids in our bodies, but aren't actually functional. In normal human biology, you have 20 amino acids, nine of which are essential, but there are hundreds of these non-protein amino acids that occur in the plant kingdom and that are essentially defense chemicals from plants. They can get incorporated into our proteins and cause misfolding, and there's a strong compelling hypothesis that misfolding may be behind neurodegenerative diseases or contribute. So, high level, Unripe fruit, not great. Seeds, which also contain non-protein amino acids, not great. But meat and organs, very nutrient rich. Fruit when it's ripe, great. That's why you crave sweet things. So if you've got a sweet tooth, yeah, it's not great if you're eating candy, but it's okay when you're having that sweet craving to eat things like fruit and honey. That's what your ancestors were eating for hundreds of thousands of years. That's normal. That's what humans are meant to eat, guys. That's what humans thrive on is meat and organs, fruit, honey, and raw dairy, which I'll talk about as well. So that is a broad overview of an animal-based diet. Let's get into specific pieces of it. So let's start with meat. How much protein do I think you should eat on an animal-based diet? I would say about a gram per pound of body weight or goal body weight. So I'm about 165 pounds. I'll eat around 165 grams of protein per day. I don't need much more than that. And it's pretty easy to get that from a variety of sources. Things like grass-fed ground beef or grass-fed steak. Here I've got a tomahawk ribeye that I grilled. It's gonna be easy to get to 160 grams of protein between raw milk and steak in a day. That's your protein. Think about protein first. Getting bioavailable protein from animal foods will help you stay full throughout the day. It'll help you with energy. It'll help you with libido. And meat is an incredible source of many unique micronutrients that are very difficult or impossible to find in plants. But to complement that meat, you need a few things. So you've got your muscle meat. You need two things to complement this. You need a bone broth. So this is a homemade bone broth a good source of glycine, proline, and hydroxyproline. These are amino acids that are found in the collagenous tissue of animals. Historically, evolutionarily, your ancestors would have eaten the whole animal. They would have taken those tendons and boiled them. Nothing would have gone to waste. You would get a mix of the amino acids in muscle meat and the amino acids that are more prominent in collagenous tissues. I'm not a big fan of hydrolyzed collagen supplements and powders. A lot of those are from Chile and Argentina, and they're full of significant amounts of heavy metals. They're low quality hoof and hide collagen. I just make my own bone broth. I get knuckle bones or beef bones from the butcher. I put them in a crock pot with some reverse osmosis water. Boom, you get a bone broth with glycine, proline, and hydroxyproline, the amino acids that will balance the amino acids found in the steak. What else do you need to complement your muscle meat? You need organs. Here I've got some raw liver. I will also eat heart. In terms of liver amounts, I'll do about a half an ounce to an ounce per day, most days of the week. And then heart, if I've got heart, I'll do a few ounces of heart every day. If I can get other organs like testicle or spleen or kidney, I'll eat those throughout the week as well, a few ounces per day. Organs have unique micronutrients that complement the micronutrients in steak. So bone broth complements the amino acids in steak, organs complement the, the micronutrients in steak, things like vitamins and minerals. Steak is a good source of vitamin B12, iron, vitamin K2, and things like B6 or pyridoxine. But liver has minerals like copper, which balance the zinc. 
it has folate, it has riboflavin. Those are not found in any particular amount in steak, and it has many other micronutrients and vitamins that will complement what you're finding in muscle meat. So liver and heart, organs in general, these are essential to get to balance your muscle meat. So muscle meat is at the center, but you should complement that with a bone broth and with organs, either fresh or frozen. I eat a lot of frozen liver. And if you can't get frozen liver, if you don't wanna eat raw liver or raw heart, or you don't wanna get fresh organs at all because they gross you out, you're not used to it, Look guys, I'm so proud of what we built at Heart and Soil. You can find us at heartandsoil.co. We make grass-fed, grass-finished, regeneratively raised, desiccated organs that is freeze-dried to preserve as many of the nutrients as possible in capsules. And it's always in glass because plastic is bullshit. Sourced from New Zealand. These are the highest quality desiccated organs on the planet. That's what's up. So if you don't wanna eat fresh organs, check us out at heartandsoil.co. But whatever you do, make sure to get collagen in the bone broth and to get liver along with your muscle meat. If you wanna get started with an animal-based diet, Join me and Heart and Soil for our Animal Base 30 Challenge, which starts January the 1st. Signups are open now. Go to AnimalBase30.com. The link is in the description. It's a free challenge. When you sign up, you'll get access to an Animal Based Eating Guide, which is a comprehensive guide. It'll give you potential meal plans, macro calculations, all that kind of stuff. And you'll be a part of a community of support during the Animal Base 30 Challenge in January. Through Animal Base 30, there are discounts on Heart and Soil products and if you join Animal Base 30 and you buy any of the supplements at Hard and Soil, you get a free bottle of Firestarter. I'm so proud of what we built at Hard and Soil. This is an amazing company making the finest desiccated freeze-dried organs on the planet sourced from New Zealand. And the support that we're able to give to customers is really second to none. There are literally tens of thousands of success stories of people changing their diets, animal-based, libido, weight loss, diabetes, autoimmune disease, fertility, pregnancies, kids, adults, elderly benefiting from this way of eating. And Heart and Soil is really the epicenter of supporting this movement. Go to AnimalBase30.com to sign up for Animal Base 30 Challenge in January. Hope to see you guys in there. Back to the video. So in terms of protein, people ask, what about chicken? What about pork? What about fish? These are animal foods. They do not contain defense chemicals like vegetables do, but these are not as clean as grass-fed beef in 2023. Chicken and pork are often fed corn and soy, which will enrich their fatty tissues in linoleic acid. I don't think that's good for humans. That's the 18 carbon omega-6 polyunsaturated fatty acid that occurs in seed oils that I think is problematic for humans when it accumulates. So a little bit of chicken, a little bit of pork, fine, especially if it's lean, but I would not make chicken and pork the majority of your diet because it's very hard to find these foods that are not fed corn and soy. Fish, it's just not my favorite, guys. Even if it's wild, it's gonna have significant amounts of heavy metals, PFAs, which are forever chemicals, endocrine disruptors, microplastics. It's just polluted in 2023. It doesn't mean you can never eat fish. It just means, again, I wouldn't make it the majority of your diet. When you're thinking about animal protein, I think that grass-fed beef, bison, elk, deer, lamb, goat, these are gonna be your best bet in terms of quality and in terms of the absence of other contaminating chemicals that occur in the other meats. Think about that when you're choosing your protein source. You might also notice that I don't have eggs on this table. I think eggs are a great source of food for humans. They're very nutrient rich, but like chicken and fish, they're often fed corn and soy. And we know that when chickens are fed corn and soy, they make eggs that are much higher in linoleic acid than their cousins that are not fed corn and soy. I don't eat eggs unless I know that they are not fed corn and soy, that they are truly pasture raised. If you want to eat eggs, be aware of this and select something that is organic, pasture raised and corn and soy free. It's difficult to find good quality eggs, but I think they're a good source of nutrition on an animal based diet. What else? Let's talk about carbohydrates. I've got a bunch of fruit here. I've got fruits that I normally eat in a day. Watermelon, orange, I'll make orange juice. I got mango. I've got some local glyphosate free honey. I've got a coconut that I'll drink for coconut water. That's gonna have carbohydrates. I've even got a squash here. This is a fruit. You think of it as a vegetable, but this is a fruit. Why do I favor fruit as a source of carbohydrates? This is easily digestible, and there are very few plant defense chemicals in ripe fruit, even lower than what you find in starchy forms of carbohydrates. I'm not a fan of grains at all. These are things like oats, wheat, and all of these contain non-protein amino acids. When it comes to carbohydrates, I think that one of the big mistakes people make on an animal-based diet is not getting enough of them. You wanna get at least 150 grams a day, and if you're more active, up to 300 grams a day. You can go to my website, paulsaladinomd.co, that's .co, and there's a free animal-based calculator there to help you with your macros based on your activity level and your goals. I will probably get about 300 grams of carbohydrates every day from things like fruit, watermelon, oranges, mango, coconut water, honey, squash, and that's how I feel the best. That's how my hormones are the best. That's how my sleep is the best. That's how my recovery is the best. Granted, I'm an active human. 
I'm skating on a skate ramp every day, I'm lifting a little weight, and I'm getting in the ocean a few hours to surf. So if you're not as active, you may not need as many carbohydrates, but do not fear fruit, guys. There is so much good research in humans that fruit is healthy for you. There's really no evidence that fruit contributes or causes problems in humans, not fatty liver, not diabetes, nothing. If you have diabetes, if you have insulin resistance, think about this. You may wanna lower your carbohydrates a little bit. You're still going to benefit from having them in your diet. Fruit does not cause diabetes. Say it with me, fruit and carbohydrates do not cause diabetes. Seed oils do over time. This is a good thing to have in your diet. It will improve the abundance signals you're giving to your body. It will lower stress hormones like cortisol, glucagon, epinephrine, and others. You don't want the stress hormones. You wanna give your body the nutrients it needs to have a signal of abundance, and having fruit and honey is the way to do that. If you wanna try some starches, it's not the end of the world. It's kind of a gray area, but I have found that I feel best, and a lot of people that I've worked with feel best when they avoid things like white potatoes or white rice. Some people do okay with starch like white potatoes or yucca, but all of these come with other issues. White potatoes and yucca have significant amounts of oxalates, other lectins. It's a gray area, guys. If you wanna do some roots, you can cook them, but I found that I feel best, and this is why I recommend at least starting this way on an animal-based diet with fruit or squash, which is actually a fruit. And I've actually left out avocado. A lot of people love avocado, that's a fruit as well. So there's a lot of things people think about as vegetables that are fruit. Cucumber, zucchini, squash, in addition to these things, those I think are fine. With the fruit like cucumber or zucchini that has skin in the seeds, I would get rid of the skin in the seeds and cook them well to make sure they digest properly. If you do me a huge favor right now and hit that subscribe button, I will make a commitment to you that I will keep making videos like this and do them as good as possible to bring you as much free, valuable content to help you thrive in your life. I'll do grocery hauls. I'll do more stuff on an animal-based diet. Thank you guys. I appreciate your support. I'm gonna keep making content. Thanks for hitting that subscribe button. So animal fats. Here I've got some raw cheese, which you actually could eat even if you're lactose intolerant. That's Parmigiano Reggiano. And I've got some raw grass-fed local butter. You don't really need to think a whole lot about fat on an animal-based diet. It will come with the foods you're eating. In general, I would recommend something around 40% of your calories from fat, 40% of your calories from carbohydrates, give or take, 20% of your calories from protein or a little bit less. That's probably gonna be fine for most people. I get the fat that I eat from the steaks that I'm eating. It comes with the meat and I'm trying to use fatty ground beef, 80-20. But if you need to add fat, if you can't find fatty ground beef or you want something leaner, you can add grass-fed butter or you can use something like a beef tallow to add a little bit of fat to your meals. But you don't need to overdo the fat. Your body will kind of give you a signal here. You don't want to go too low on your fat. You definitely don't want to go below, much below 30 or 20% on your fat because you will not feel good. Your hormones will not be optimal and you will be craving fat like crazy. So that sweet spot that I found for fat is somewhere between 30 and 40% of my calories. Again, there's an animal-based calculator at Paul Saladino MD. Co. Raw dairy is something that I've added the last few years of my life. It's been a very valuable thing for me. I'm a huge fan of raw milk. This is raw goat's milk. If you can't find raw milk where you are, look at realmilk.com to find a farmer near you who may have a co-op that you can find raw milk. I found that even with the history of being lactose intolerant, over time, I was able to drink raw milk. I gradually increased it, but raw milk contains bacteria that can populate your gut and can digest their own lactose. If you're lactose intolerant, do not fear, just find some good raw dairy. If you want to experiment with this and gradually include that in your diet, and you'll probably be able to do things like milk or even raw cream, but raw matters, guys. I do not include pasteurized dairy in my diet. I think that once you pasteurize milk and cheese, it has the potential to become much more immunogenic. So this is a raw cheese, that is a Parmigiano Reggiano. Look for raw cheese and raw milk, and I think you'll be better from the dairy perspective. Why include dairy at all? Because dairy contains unique nutrients that are not found other places here, like calcium, and it has more of certain things that help balance the stuff out. I feel better with dairy in my diet, and I think you will too. It's a unique food that has value for humans, and there's good evidence that the whey, protein, and dairy is quite helpful for us and can even improve antioxidant status like glutathione. So there is your animal-based grocery list, and I hope this video on the ultimate animal-based diet was helpful.